Okay, uh, I will improvise uh, a lecture on very basic logic. I will just comment uh, the log logic for the Unterklasse from the writings of Hegel. Uh, it's for a supposedly a 15 or 16 or 17 years old officially but I realize that what I talk about is, is intelligible unintelligible because it's way too complex so I will try to go really to the basics it's not speculative logic uh, there are no determinations of uh, of being uh, it's mostly the logic of the concept it's really ordinary logic very simplified I will uh, I will comment uh, as briefly as I can but here it's just an illustration of the classification of, of biology and uh, the, 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 the logic of the concept uh, is divided in three moments universal, particular, singular it's really basic but actually uh, it, it, it helps tremendously uh, UPS uh, pretty much everything can be divided categorized with just using these these three moments and here in the realm of biology here are the the, the classification of, of man here the classification here they are the same animalia cordata mammalia of dog and here it's uh, cat and this trinitarian uh, classification universal particular singular can be applied to the classification of most objects and in the case of biology uh, one could say that if the universal is kingdom namely the kingdom of animalia of animals the, the particular uh, the particularization of the universal would be the cordata that would be the philum and the singular would be mammals mammalia within the, the particularity of cordata and the universality of animalia but the, the the free part process can be applied to anything. One could say that a human being is a singular individual whose particularity is to belong to the species sapiens of the genus Homo, so that would be a UPS, or, uh, or if the U is primate, the order, the particular determination is hominidae, namely the family would be the particular, and the singular would be the genus Homo. So this three-way um, process of classification can be applied to, to, to most objects. Here in the realm of biology there are a high degree, it's uh, elevated in terms of classification because we can go even further, uh, living organism, uh, physical objects, etc, etc, but the, the tool, the, the intellectual tool, UPS, can help clarify, classify, order, structure and make intelligible uh, reality basically so that's just to illustrate and I will talk about this later but basically the singular wherever it is situated uh, contains within itself the determinations characteristics features properties of the particular and the particular contains within itself the determination of the universal which means we'll talk about this a little bit later with the syllogism that the determination of the universal and of the particular are contained within the singular, namely uh, Homo sapiens contains within itself the determination of primates and of mammals, namely every Homo sapiens is a mammal uh, and an animal or is a primate and a mammal etc etc. So what is, which means in, in classical logic, which is uh, classical logic, what is true of mammals is true of primates because what is true of, of you not you uh, watching the video <laughs> you are uh, universal what is true of the universal is also true of the particular because the particular contains within itself the determinations of the universal so what is true of mammals is true of primates and also of all the the sub divisions the sub particularization because uh, here uh, U, P, S, but uh, S is a particularization of P. So we can 
I will not complexify too much, but basically what is true of, of mammals is true of primates, and what is true of primates is true of, of, of the genus Homo, therefore of Homo sapiens, which means that what is true of mammals is true of Homo sapiens. What is true of animals is true of uh, Felidae, uh, and what is true of Felidae is true of cats, so what is true of animals is true of cats, basically. That's basic logic. But the reverse is not true, namely what is valid for cats or for uh, Homo sapiens for uh, humans is not necessarily true of mammals or of animals, uh, namely uh, humans uh, have uh, are standing, usually who are, when they are healthy they can stand on their two legs, this is true of human beings who are born healthy with no genetic disease, no accidents at all, they can stand uh, on their feet, it is not true of, of all animals, they, they have I don't know how you call this in English, but a two feet, a two feet uh, uh, animal, uh, most uh, animals are, have four legs. Uh, I mean, not all of them, but uh, most mammals have four legs, uh, 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 who, those who walk on, on the earth. So what is true of the singular is not necessarily true of the particular. It's not a uh, uh, reverse. Most cats have uh, furry hair. Uh, it's not true of all, uh, of all, uh, of all the uh, chordata, for instance. So it works uh, downward, but not upward. From going from the universal to the particular to the singular is a process of determination, acquiring determinations, properties, characteristics, but the reverse, namely elevating oneself from the singular to the particular to the universal, consists in leaving aside determination, because what is true of Homo sapiens is not true of all primates, not of all mammals, not of all animals, etc., etc. So that was just a very basic introduction. So UPS really is, is very useful. <laughs> it's, it's very uh, uh, just changing the vocabulary and uh, it, it can help a great deal. Uh, and I will use another illustration as an introduction. Uh, let us take a government. Here I will simplify. Uh, so government would be the universal and the particulars would be a uh, monarchy, aristocracy and uh, democracy. These are uh, determination of, of uh, political theory but actually uh, these are quantitative determinations namely uh, monarchy, there is one ruler, aristocracy, there are many rulers, and democracy, uh, not all, but uh, the, the, the political body, the political uh, agents are more numerous. So these would be particular types of government. Government means uh, an institutionalized, uh, impersonal, I mean, it can be personal in the sense that in a, in a primitive tribe there is no government, there, is, there are rulers and people with authority, but it's not a government in the sense that the authority, the power, the, 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 the management uh, of social, um, social um, affairs uh, is not uh, fully developed, there are no uh, official institutions, etc. It's more personal, but yeah. So let us imagine that the three particularities of government, government are monarchy, aristocracy, democracy. Uh, the republics would be classified under democracy, so I could have put democracy, uh, republic here, and democracy as a subgenre, depending on how you define democracy or republic. Uh, the parties, like uh, in uh, communist parties, this is kind of aristocracy. It's uh, and, uh, the aristocracy of the bureaucrats, uh, and uh, the despotism, tyranny would be monarchy. So basically, it's just one ruler, a few, many. Basically, I simplify. And then, so that would be, and then the S, uh, you can have a 19th century uh, English monarchy, uh, 17th century French monarchy, uh, you can have a Roman Republic aristocracy, you can have uh, Athenian democracy in the 5th century BCE, you can have a, a Swiss democracy, American democracy, etc., uh, etc. Et so that's another way of classifying. It's just to, to illustrate. I will just make, to make sure, uh, and then again, I, what is true of 
governments, namely a, div a, a division of, of, of the, 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 the institution of power, the, the power organization, social life to bring about justice and peaceful uh, living together of, of many uh, individuals through a development of institutions with social role, uh, authority, uh, um, obedience, uh, sanctions uh, for those who disobey, uh, rewards for those uh, 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 rights and, and uh, they, I mean, strictly speaking, they are not necessarily rights, but uh, in, in some uh, despotic government there are no rights, but obligations and eventually rights, uh, taxation, etc., etc. What is true of a government is true of a monarchical government, an aristocratic government, a democratic government, and what is true of a democracy is true of Athenian democracy in the 5th century BCE, uh, the American democracy uh, of, of the early uh, 19th century, and uh, the, 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 the democracy uh, uh, in, uh, in Eastern European countries after the fall of communism. But the, the connection here between Athens, uh, uh, USA, uh, 18th century, so it's 5th BCE, uh, the, 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 the identity, what is identical between uh, uh, the, the various singularities, I don't know, uh, let us say uh, Slovenia, uh, because of Zizek, <laughs> uh, the, the, the common points to talk, to talk in ordinary language between Athenian democracy, American democracy, at the end of the 18th, I should put 19th century, uh, it's very different. Uh, in Athens, they had slaves, it was a patriarchy, uh, only a very a tiny minority of people were citizens, one might say. It was also the case in the 19th century uh, American democracy. And Slovenia, it's completely different. Uh, women have a right to vote, etc. So the, 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 the property, the determinations are very diverse, sometimes opposed, etc., etc. But that's just to illustrate. It's just to illustrate because this classification, namely to understand that what is true of uh, Athens, USA, and Slovenia uh, in these centuries, uh, they contain within themselves the fundamental principles, determinations, grund of a democratic government, but uh, each contains its own singular aspect. So that's why uh, P and U are contained within S, but the reverse is not true. Uh, yeah. Okay. I will, I could have added, I will not uh, draw because it would be too long, but I could say, I've taken just a few, uh, two other examples. Economics, if U is economics, then there are particular type of economics. Let us say that economics is a socially organized uh, production, preservation, acquisition, and transfer of wealth, whatever, management of limited resources. So there is uh, primitive economics, uh, uh, feudal economics, um, capitalist economics, socialist economics, nationalist economics, etc. And then the, the various singular cases, uh, etc., etc. That's an example. But then I will just put one last example. Uh, woman. If woman is the universal, the various uh, particular uh, type of women, there is a girlfriend, uh, wife, mother, sister, uh, aunt, uh, daughter, uh, with the wife uh, comes uh, the mistress, of course, <laughs> that's a joke. Uh, yeah, so these are various particularization of the role of a woman in relation to uh, to, to males, mostly, but also to females. One can be the sister of another female, but mostly it would be the particularities of, of woman would be the universal uh, in, in, the, in, the, in, in, the, in the particularity of relationship. And then you could say 
uh, you could choose uh, the, the, the origin or the, the social status or the age, etc., etc., or the hair color or whatever. But it's just uh, to, to, to show that what is true of, of a woman, I could have picked up a man, is true of the woman as a girlfriend, the woman as a wife, the woman as a mother, the woman as a sister, the woman as an aunt, as a daughter, as a mistress, etc. But uh, there is an, an aspect of womanhood which is present in all these particular roles. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's just an illustration. Okay, so now uh, hopefully it's clear. I don't need to go into full detail. So now I will comment. Uh, I will not write all the words because it would take too long. I will just read. Uh, the few passages. So, it's uh, for the Unterklasse, that's for uh, teenagers, supposedly, German teenagers, uh, officially of the 19th century, so the, the standards have declined ever since, uh, yeah, but basically it's, it's not supposed to be very difficult. So, okay, philosophy is the science of the absolute ground of things, the, 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 the fundamental principle, the ground uh, from which uh, things derive the 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 the, the, the essence, uh, the absolute, the, the 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 cause of of the things, the ground, the fundamental, whatever. What what is behind uh, the presence, the world, the universe? What is what is the, the the ground of of things? This is the one of the questions that philosophy is supposed to answer, but not in their singularity or particularity, but in their universality. Okay. Das Denken, thought, consider the universal of things, what is universal in things. Uh, logic is the science of thought. So here it's very important, maybe I should have begun with this because now it's been 17 minutes, but uh, thought, consider what is universal because through our senses, through my sensuous perception, my sensuous presence in the world, I am in contact with, uh, with singular objects. Through the senses, through the, 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 the sensuous presence in the world, we perceive singular objects. Uh, the objects that we perceive, they are always fully determined. They are wirklich, to talk like the Germans, namely, they, they have all their properties which are fully determined. Size, color, shape. Uh, there are no undetermined objects. The subject perceiving the objects can be unable to give the determination because it's not clear, because he doesn't know what, he, what it is, but all the objects which are uh, present sensuously through perception, they are fully determined. It is through the activity of thought that we separate and that we can think about a pen in general with no particular color, no particular size, no particular price, uh, no particular brand uh, which produced the pen, etc. We can think of a pen in general, we can think of a book in general, and precisely the activity of thought consists in abstracting from the singularized objects given around us and to elevate oneself through the realm, uh, through, through the, the activity of abstraction and, and, and negative in, in the sense of negation, uh, to the universality, because when we talk about a book. Um, when we talk about a book, we think about a given, determined, a determinate, specific book. We have in mind uh, this book, as Hegel would say, but every book is this book. We have in mind this one, but actually when we talk about books or about uh, pens or about uh, about uh, wallets or about uh, glasses, we think about singularized object, but what is when, when we speak about the characteristic of glasses, uh, we, we express general characteristics and properties which are valid for all glasses, all books, all pens. So through language we express our thoughts and thinking is the activity of universalizing, of elevating the singular to the level of universality. That's what thought. That's why thought is universal. Uh, if I will take an, I take an example which is clear. Uh, if uh, I think about uh, a square, 
I, I may see through my senses this square which is on this table with its given properties, the, the length, it's not, very, it's not even a square because uh, it's not a rigorous, but the, the, the angles, uh, the, 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 the size, uh, etc, etc. But this is a singular example, but the thought of a square in general is universal. It's, it's the, the properties, namely that it has four sides, of the same length with uh, right angles, uh, the, the, I, don't know, I don't know how you call this, but the, the, I don't know how you call this, they cross in the middle or whatever. It's true for all squares and the same goes for triangles. It's simple to, to express this through mathematics. That's why thought by its very nature is universal. That's what uh, people do not understand, namely that through the internet people can share their thoughts and they think they, they, they get decided that they speak to a given audience, their subscribers, or uh, they make a video for a, spe a specific person. They don't realize that uh, thought by its very nature is universal, but through communication, it can be universalized. Namely, that potentially anyone can watch and, and understand, uh, understand uh, the thoughts which are expressed through language through, through the medium of the internet. That's why the universality is becoming conscious of itself. That's why we are living uh, an age of, of revelation, I might say. But uh, yeah, so, uh, because to think means to predicate categories uh, to objects, and categories are universal. This is the software of the mind. This is what every human possesses unconsciously in his mind. And, and that's why, uh, if I say, um, This pen is a physical object. It has a shape, a weight, a size, etc. Uh, this is true of all physical objects. And through language, I express what is true universally. Any uh, physical object fall uh, when uh, the, the gravitational um, attraction uh, attracts them towards the center of the Earth. Uh, there are exceptions uh, if uh, uh, force. Uh, powerful enough to make the, the, the pen elevate itself through uh, uh, whatever, but usually most in case, let's forget planes and, and, and balloons and uh, helicopters, most objects when they are dropped, they fall. And this expressed in not very good English, it's a universal thought and it's valid. The, the law of gravitation is valid everywhere. Uh, uh, on, on Earth and, and, and at all times and for all objects. Uh, even the objects which fly or elevate themselves, they still obey the laws of gravity simply because uh, the pressure of the air, whatever, whatever, the, the, the force exerted by the, the impulse, but whatever. But that, that's an illustration. Okay, now, empfindum, a sensation is the way through which uh, we are affected by an object. So. And findum, which means sensation, is how we, we, we enter into contact with singularized objects. Through our senses, we are always in contact. Direct contact doesn't mean physical. It's, it can be eye contact, it can be the sense of smell, the, 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 the hearing to hear a sound. Although, strictly speaking, it's contact because these are the waves which affect the inner uh, ear. But basically, and the same goes for the light which penetrates in the eye, but it doesn't mean touch necessarily. It means that to be immediately present through our senses. So through our senses, we are constantly informed of singularized objects. Through the activity of thinking, which expresses itself through language, we speak the universal. We think the universal because thought, by its very nature, is universal. Namely, valid for all, uh, etc. In Vorstellen, so in representation, uh, so uh, Sensation means immediately present, and representation means to have the image of a perception or a sensation, but the object that we represent ourselves doesn't need to be immediately present. If I think about a tree, not in a conceptual sense, but in, in, a, in a way of representation, I see uh, the trunk and the, the, the leaves, basically. I think about a tree. Yeah, and there's the sun. And there is a, there is a, the Anglo-Saxon businessman uh, who wants to cut the tree uh, to make a profit. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a joke. Uh, so yeah, that, that's a representation. If I say a tree, I have the representation brought in mind and I do not need to be in presence of a tree. 
I just have the representation. But then the thought of a tree would be the, the determinations, the, the botanic, vegetal determinations, what is a tree. Uh, I'm not an expert in botanics, but only uh, people who are knowledgeable in botanics can give the, the concept in the ordinary sense, namely not the image, but what it is from a biological, organic, uh, botanic standpoint, the properties, uh, the chemical properties, the, the biological processes, the photosynthesis, etc. Et so this is, would be the representation, and most of humans have representation in mind when they speak about an object, when they speak about a about God, uh, about a country, uh, about uh, experiences, they have representation, they need mental images. And we can have representation with or without being affected directly by the object. Uh, I can think, uh, uh, try not to think about a pink elephant, that's a, an old uh, trick, try not to think about a pink elephant, of course the first thing you think about is a pink elephant. The pink elephant does not have to be here sensuously, it's just a mental image. So, uh, s the determinations in, in representation are abstract, sensuous representation like color, uh, form, shape, uh, uh, taste eventually, uh, etc. When we say uh, pink, uh, red, blue, these are colors, these are abstract representation and we access uh, the, the, the realm. Colors, typically, uh, they are representation and we, we think about, we do not think actually, we represent uh, thinking about colors would be to give the physical determination, namely in terms of optics, the, the, the electromagnetic wavelength, the nature of the, the photon and, and the, the electromagnetic uh, uh, frequency, etc. That would be thinking about colors, but uh, representing colors means to, to have images and I can only think about, in the ordinary sense, about colors, uh, for instance, the color uh, uh, yellow here uh, if I think about yellow uh, here is a piece of bread it's, it's not really yellow but here the color yellow kind of is present in this piece of paper and in this piece of bread uh, but if I think about the color yellow I have to abstract the determination of this uh, piece of bread, the determination of this piece of paper, the determination of the sun, uh, of the submarine, uh, the submarine can be yellow, uh, I will not make a dubious joke about race, but uh, other, some people can be yellow, etc. Uh, fever can be yellow, uh, yeah, but if uh, I want to think about a color in general, or a sound, or uh, a shape, I have to abstract, if I think about, if I represent uh, the, the shape round, uh, the earth is round, uh, a fat woman is round, <laughs> that's okay. Uh, a circle, uh, when we drop a, a pebble in the water, the, 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 the waves are round shaped. Uh, uh, what is round? Uh, um, uh, um, um, money, uh, um, how do you call this? A coin is round, etc. So if I think about the representation round, I have to abstract from all the determination of the empirical singular if, uh, wirklich objects which represent the shape of round or the color yellow or, uh, or uh, whatever. Yeah. If I think about sound, thinking about sound would be giving the, the physical determination of acoustics the wavelength, etc., the way it impacts here, but representing sounds, I have to abstract from the, the cause or the, the origin of the sound, I mean, the, the singing of the birds, the, the, the sound of the cars, uh, the, 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 the shouts of the people, uh, etc. Et if, if I represent myself sound, I have to leave aside all this determination and just to, to keep the determination of sound. Yeah, the, uh, that is a, a universal sensuous representation. So it is through a mediation namely through separating from other determination. If I think about the color yellow, I have to leave aside the shape, the texture, the size, the, the, the physical properties, uh, the, 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 the nature of the object in a sense, the purpose of the object, the cause, etc. I leave aside all these determination and I, I only keep the color. So I leave aside, this is a work of abstraction. Uh, but more than these sensuous representation, the singular objects, they are within time and space, which are universal 
form of perception, one might say, what Kant would call a transcendental aesthetic, namely we perceive, I perceive objects in time, they are subject to becoming, to change, uh, and in space, so time and space uh, are forms of sensibility, namely objects are put in time and in space, and that's how I perceive them, basically, they are spatially and temporally perceived. Uh, space, from a philosophical standpoint, is the relationship of the außer und neben einander seins der Dinge. Namely, space is the relation of the being outside one another and next to one another of things. Namely, in space, things are external to one another and they are next to one another. They are the, the, space is the realm of externality, basically, of exteriority and externality. Uh, the objects or the, 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 the things contain more determinations which belong to their Verstand and which uh, are uh, universal, uh, non-sensuous, non-sensuous forms and these are the categories. So uh, precisely this, uh, this pen, it has shape, color, uh, texture, etc., uh, etc. Et but the categories would be, for instance, it's a, a whole with parts. Uh, the, 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 the category of whole uh, and the category of parts, they are not visible, strictly speaking, they are in the mind in a way. Uh, it has a cause, the reason why this pen has been produced, it has a purpose, the end goal, uh, it has a universality, namely the, the, the concept in the ordinary sense, the, the, what is the, the, the definition. Uh, it is one, uni it is identity. We do not see the identity, but this object is identical with itself. That's the law of der Verstand. So this is a category that the mind uh, projects onto the object, but it is also a category of the object. But yeah, so these are examples of the categories. They are non-visible cause, uh, whole parts, unity, uh, these are not sensuous, these are abstract, non-physical, non non-invisible uh, in a way, uh, forms of the mind. Uh, the concept in ordinary sense, not the Hegelian concept, but the concept as people use the term, namely uh, the moment of abstract universality, a Denkbestimmung, thought determination, contains the determined nature of an object expresses the, 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 the determined nature of an object. Uh, so the concept of a pen is, is what expresses what a pen is, not this one, but all pen. Uh, the concept of bread that would be uh, edible food uh, made up of uh, flour and, 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 uh, and water with salt uh, cooked uh, for uh, Whatever, I don't know what, what bread is, what the definition is, but that would be the concept in ordinary sense, which now I have no enough about Hegel, so to speak. Ordinary, what ordinarily is called concept is very different from what the philosophy of Hegel calls concepts. What we ordinarily call concepts, are just, these are just Denkbestimmungen, these are just the moment of abstract universality. So the concept in ordinary sense. Uh, doesn't contain the multiplicity and the sensuous determination of an object, but rather the, the object according to his, its universal essence and its, its essential particularization, uh, namely uh, bread, the universal essence would be edible food, and the essential particularization would be uh, baked uh, flour, not flour uh, like uh, Roses and uh, uh, not uh, roses and uh, and and, and uh, yeah uh, turn uh, yeah the flower like uh, the, the ingredients yeah, so the, that would be edible food that's the universality and the the, the, the essential particularization would be made up of uh, water and f and flour for instance uh, the, here a pen the universality would be. Uh, a, a tool, um, how do you call this? Uh, a tool, for lack of a better word, used for uh, office work. And uh, the particularization of this pen would be, which enables to write uh, on 
on on on uh, on table boards. That would be uh, uh, that would be uh, the, the definition in a way of this. Uh, if I had to give the, the concept of of a pen, I don't know how it is in English, but basically that would be an object made for writing, uh, and so that would be. The, the universal would be an object made for writing, and the particular determination would be made for writing on table boards and to be uh, erased. That would be basically uh, the concept, the definition. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, and now uh, I will. Uh, I will write because it's important here. Okay, it's been 35 minutes. Uh, here, it's important. This is what I talked about at the beginning of the video. So if you have watched up until now, it shouldn't come as a surprise. The universal limits itself. Here I draw, it's important. The universal uh, limits itself in the particular. So the particular, the particulars, in a way, are limitations of the universal uh, because uh, uh, the, if the universal is animal, uh, uh, mammals is a particularization which stands opposed to uh, uh, birds, uh, uh, amphibians, uh, or reptilians, uh, re reptiles, etc., etc., or. Uh, a living organism, uh, insects, bacteria, etc., uh, etc. Et so the, the universal limits itself, particularizes itself, without ceasing to be what it is. Namely, uh, uh, a living organism doesn't cease to be what it is, whether it's a, an insect, a bird, uh, a, a reptile, uh, a mammal, uh, a mammal, if that's the universal, doesn't cease to be what it is, whether it's a cat, a dog, a human, uh, a squirrel, uh, etc., etc. And the same goes for the passage from P to S. The particular uh, edible food doesn't cease to be what it is, whether it's a piece of bread or a piece of uh, chocolate cake or uh, strawberries, uh, whatever. So, yeah. Uh, but the, the, the reverse, namely when the, the singular elevates itself to the particular, it loses its content, it loses determinations. Uh, what is true of uh, capitalism in the 1950s uh, in Canada, uh, it is true that there are determinations which are valid for all capitalist economic system, but there are determinations which are only valid in the, the, the singular circumstances of the 1950s in Canada, and they only belong to this singular case, and they do not belong to uh, capitalism in uh, uh, the 1970s in Scotland. That's an illustration. Yeah. Uh, the universal grasp the particular and the singular uh, under itself, and so does the particular, which comprises or, or, or grasp the singular under itself. Uh, so the particular and the singular are under the universal. What is valid of the universal is also valid of the partic particular, and what is valid of the particular is also valid of the singular, but not the reverse. Uh, yeah. Uh, what is uh, what is valid of physical? Um, physical uh, objects is valid of, of, of physical object made of plastic, but what is valid of physical object made of plastic is not valid of all physical objects. Physical object made of, of, of iron or of minerals uh, have different properties. So, yeah. Uh, the, the singular uh, contains, however, the particular and the universal in itself, or another way of formulating this is that the particular and the universal are inherent in the singular, and so is the universal is inherent in uh, in the particular. And here, 
Uh, here I will talk uh, because I, I anticipated it's getting a little bit uh, uh, boring. Yeah, I, I took two examples. Marriage. Uh, when uh, people, uh, young people or not so young, when they get married, they think that their marriage, their singular marriage, will be uh, extraordinary, it will be unique, uh, like no other, etc. But actually, a singular marriage contains within itself the particular and the universal. And here, a marriage could be a particular type of marriage between uh, people in their early 20s, a man and a woman in their early 20s, so that would be the particularization, and then there would be uh, second marriage, third marriage, fourth marriage, or there could be uh, a, mar a Christian marriage, uh, a Muslim marriage, an atheist marriage, uh, heterosexual marriage, homosexual marriage, and that would be the particularities, but the universal would be valid for all the particulars and all the singular. So every married couple uh, believes that their marriage is unique, like no other, but actually, of course, the determination of their singular story is unique to them, but the particular and the universal, they apply to all. Uh, yeah, and then I, take, I took another example, uh, Marshall Mathers, uh, Eminem, uh, he's a singular, Marshall Mathers is the singular, and the particularities, why has he been so successful? Is it because he's an American? Is he because he's a, a white trash, was a white trash? Is he because uh, he became a father? Is it his relationship with uh, his daughter, Hailey? Uh, is it because uh, his love, he's a lover, his relationship with uh, Kim, uh, with his mother? Uh, is it because he was a, a worker in a, a D, already in, 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 in um, Michigan, in a process of deindustrialization? Is it the particularity which made him so successful? Is it because he is conflicted? And then, that would be more a universal human experience. Is it because he's a drug addict? That is a particularization of him. But there are other people who recognize themselves in the songs of, of, of Eminem because uh, he suffered from a drug addiction or uh, addiction to pills. But there are people who do not suffer from this, but they suffer from alcohol uh, or from various uh, ills. Uh, is it because he's uh, comical, uh, twisted, sometimes violent, or, or simply brilliant? Uh, is it because he succeeded, uh, in a way, to fulfill the American dream? What are the particularities which enabled Marshall Mathers to elevate himself to the level of universal uh, uh, god of, of rap? This, these are good questions. Actually, maybe it's the totality, but uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's just an illustration. And this is a question of, of judgment. We'll talk about this later. I need to be able to identify properly the, the, the proper particularity which makes a singular elevate itself to the universality. Uh, yeah. So the universal is wider than the particular and the singular, and the particular is wider than the singular. It's more extended. It has a more extended sphere. Uh, however, the particular and the singular contain more determinations, more properties in them than the universal. That's why the universal, without its particularization and eventually its singularization, is abstract. A book in general has no specific topic, doesn't tell any story, uh, it, is, it, it has no uh, specific vocabulary. A book in general is empty. There are only particular types of book, poetry, novels, uh, essays, uh, scientific treaties, uh, autobiography, etc. And then the singular, uh, the poetry of uh, uh, Wordsworth, uh, treaties on uh, of cosmology, uh, autobiography of uh, tennis players. These are examples. Okay. Uh, the singular or the concrete, so the universal is abstract, the singular is concrete because it is fully determined, it contains uh, opposed and diverse determination within itself, is wealthier or richer in multiplicity of determinacies or determinations than the particular and the singular. So the, the singular is wealthier in, a sense, in terms of determinations. Uh, however, uh, the universal contains more uh, the, uh, more under itself than either the particular or the universal. Uh, 
economic systems, it's very abstract, or uh, economic systems, it contains with, under itself socialist, capitalist, fascist, nationalist, primitive, uh, anarchist uh, forms of, of organizing the economy, but a socialist economy, a capitalist economy has much more determinations than just economic systems. Economy is very vague, very abstract, very empty in a way. Uh, socialist economies can be empty as well uh, sometimes, but uh, yeah, the, 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 uh, the, 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 the universal is abstract, that's why it, it has to limit itself, to particularize itself, to give itself a content, to determine itself, and uh, yeah. De democracy in general is very abstract. Uh, Athenian democracy, American democracy is particularized, and then there is Athenian democracy under Pericles, uh, after uh, the, the, the loss against Sparta uh, in, the, in the Peloponnesian War, there is American democracy uh, before uh, the, the, the War of Secession, there is Amer American democracy uh, before uh, um, uh, rights were granted to Afro-Americans, there's American democracy uh, in the 1970s, in the 1980s, etc., etc. Okay. Uh, then the laws of uh, thought, which are uh, identity with itself, each object is identical with itself, a thing cannot at the same time be uh, uh, a and not A. I made a video about Der Verstand, so I will put the link. Uh, I will not repeat because here it's very brief. Uh, yeah. Uh, I will put the link to the video where I detail here. I go simply very briefly. So then there is the law of Verschiedenheit, which means every object is diverse, differentiated. Uh, the, fir the, the, the distinction as such is simply the determinacy, which brings off another. There are no two things which are completely equal to one another because of Verschiedenheit, diversity or, or, or uh, the distinction in a way. And now in the opposition, opposition is a category of essence. Uh, Yeah, I, I also wrote, uh, that's a, a famous quote by Deleuze, the French philosopher, that the concept of a dog doesn't bark. Uh, that's why it's abstract. Uh, and the, 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 in, in the ordinary sense, the concept of bread uh, cannot uh, appease a... Uh, hunger or uh, the, the concept of, 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 of beer cannot appease thirst. Uh, that's why it's abstract. Uh, yeah. And I, I just... Uh, I, I don't need to draw, but basically the process from U to S is a process of determination and the process from S to U is a process of abstraction. It's by uh, by abstracting determinations that the singular elevates itself to the universal, and by determining itself, namely limiting itself, but also giving itself a content that the universal comes down to the level of the singular. So determination, abstraction. This is the reciprocal process. Okay. I forgot my notes. Yeah, I will just uh, I, I use this moment to. Uh, uh, yeah, the, I, I just to say that the singular because I, I wrote examples that I forgot to mention. The singular contains within itself the particular and the universal. Let us take the example of planet Earth. Planet Earth is a planet. A singular planet, so it contains within itself particularity and universality, and the question of investigation is 
uh, what particularities does planet Earth share with other planets? An example would be the mass, the atmosphere, the distance to the sun, the speed of rotation, the dia di diameter, uh, the, the composition, the chemical and, and, and um, physical composition of, of the planet. Uh, is it a, a telluric planet? Is it uh, made of gas? So that would be the various particularities. The distance of the sun, uh, those closest to the sun, further away, the farthest away. Uh, is it made of, of um, solid or, or gas? Uh, what is the chemical composition? We could particularize the various planets of the solar system. And uh, thinking correctly consists in uh, distinguishing what is singular, what is particular, and what is universal. And those who say uh, there is a, uh, an, an atmosphere, there are uh, uh, an ecosystem, uh, oceans on planet Earth, therefore there are uh, an ecosystem, uh, oceans, and, and, and life on all other planets. No, because it is specific of the particular case of Earth, because of the circumstances, the distance to the sun, the history of cosmology, the proper temperature. Uh, if it was closer to the sun or more further away, uh, the, 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 there could be no uh, life because the conditions would be too cold or too hot, etc. etc. So, it's one way of, that would be the empirical method would be to, to describe and to, to catalog and to, to register the properties of a singular object. But then the thinking activity would be induction, namely to, to think under what conditions would life or uh, the, the emergence of oceans or of an atmosphere of uh, whatever, or the, the, the possibility of uh, a temperate, a rather temperate, a planet on in other galaxies. What would be the condition? What would have? What would the, the distance towards the, the star in the center of, of, of a system uh, would have to be? How would they have to be in order to to, to enable the emergence of a liquid water or a habitable, a potentially habitable planet? That so that would be a work of induction, and then it would have to be checked by telescopes uh, studying the. the the, 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 the chemical properties and the distance of other galaxies, making statistical analysis to predict the possibility. That's what the astronomers do, uh, basically. So study the singular through induction, elevate uh, to the level of the particular, empirical testing if possible, otherwise speculation in a sense of a, a statistical, uh, etc. This is just an illustration. Uh, an, uh, an, uh, an error of thought would be to say the Earth is a planet, uh, there are trees and birds and oceans on, on this planet, therefore uh, Venus and Jupiter are planets, and therefore there are birds and, and oceans and, and, uh, and, and, um, and, and, and trees on Jupiter, because they are planets. No, because they share the, 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 the the particularity of being a planet, but the conditions uh, which enable uh, life and, and liquid water and, and a cool, a rather temperate atmosphere on Earth, they are specific to, depending on the, the, the position towards the, the, in relation to the sun, the rotation, the, the chemical composition, etc. Et this is just an illustration in the realm of astronomy. <sighs> okay. So, yeah. Now we go back to the end gegen Zetsum. So, in an opposition, the diversity of the distinction is so that one of the opposed, one of the opposites, is insofar as it is not the other, and at the same time uh, is not uh, insofar as the other is, and in its concept, in the concept of an opposite, immediately stands the opposite of itself. I will illustrate with a song. The, the concept, it's not a concept. Uh, Hot and cold, up and down, in and out, yes and no. Life 
she doesn't talk about this, but light and dark, a man and a woman. One is what it is to the extent that it is not what it is not. Uh, a woman, let us talk about women, a woman is hot to the extent that uh, here the, the opposite of hot would not be cold, uh, would be uh, not attractive. Uh, so, okay, uh, uh, coffee is, is hot to the extent that it is not cold. Uh, one uh, goes up to the extent that one doesn't go goes down. Uh, east and west, uh, in and out, yes and no, uh, something is, is, is enlightening to the extent that it is not obscure, something is brilliant to the extent that it is not uh, dark. Uh, a man is a man to the extent that he is not a woman. Uh, then there is uh, an attempt to, 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 to find balance within, uh, in the middle, because uh, uh, obscure clarity is a French poetry, uh, 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 transgender people, that's an attempt to solve the opposition. Uh, to stand in the middle is an attempt to find balance. Uh, yeah, this is just an illustration. Uh, that the, the, op the opposites are in a conceptual unity, left and right. Uh, one cannot be thought without the other, left and right, Democrat, Republican, uh, Marxist, Libertarian, or Socialist, uh, Socialist and uh, Capitalist, if you will, uh, young and old, one is young to the extent that one is not old, and one becomes old when one has ceased to be young, basically. Uh, yeah, so these are just illustrations of the, the here it's the, the, the Reflexionsbestimmungen uh, of opposition, namely the opposites, are in a conceptual unity. You can't have one without the other. So, uh, the opposition expressed as a law of thought, from opposed determination, only one can be attributed or predicated to a thing, A is either B or not B, and there is no third option. Uh, so the unity of opposites is the Grund, uh, the opposites, uh, insofar as they are in a relationship, a relation or without which they are not, uh, what they are, they have a common essential unity, uh, a Dasein, uh, which is a, a determined being, Dasein, uh, insofar as it is at the same time contains an other, because it is determined being, Dasein is determined being, so it is what it is because it is limited, and a limit implies an other, which limits the Dasein, but also uh, gives the Dasein its limited being, it's, it's being actually, so Dasein implies an other, so each Dasein is the ground of the other Dasein, uh, because it is something determined, and uh, it contains the other of itself, uh, Ansich, and that's why everything, because it is determined and opposed, has its Zureichenen Grund, its sufficient reason, that's why there is a reason for everything, because the reason of something is something else. Uh, yeah. Here it's a little bit uh, too complex, maybe. But I've already talked about this in a more uh, rigorous way. And then the description or the depiction to depict, to describe, Beschreibung in German. So the depiction or the, to describe or to depict uh, an, an object contains the various multiplicity uh, of properties uh, contingent as well as essential. Uh, so the, the, the properties and the determinations of an object, whether they are contingent or essential, and express not, expresses not the concept of the object, but rather an image for the representation. That's why to describe, uh, that's the difference between uh, 
a treaty on sociology and a novel. They, they, a, a good novel is, is sociological or psychological, but the difference between great literature and uh, scientific works of the social sciences would be that uh, a great novel is a work of psychology and sociology, but it describes or narrates a story with characters, whereas a treaty on sociology or a treaty on psychology is more rigorous, more abstract. It deals with concepts and notions and thought determinations, whereas the novel, the concept, they are dressed uh, in clothes, in a way, in, 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 in the, the scientific treaty, in psychology or sociology or economics, uh, it's pure abstraction. Here's the, the, the difference between an analysis of uh, the economic crisis in 1929 and the novels by John Steinbeck. John Steinbeck gives life, in a way, to the abstract theories of the economist. The, he illustrates uh, the, the, um, uh, the, the, the Stendhal uh, uh, in early 19th century France. He, he illustrates, or Balzac in 19th century France, he illustrates uh, the rise of, of bourgeois free market capitalism through narrating stories. Uh, there are the, the theory of the economists, and even Karl Marx, I think he said that he read Balzac partly, that there was the, 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 the economic theory of 19th century Western Europe with uh, free market economics, uh, the rise of socialism, uh, entrepreneurship, uh, the, 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 the industrial revolution, there was the economic theory, and then there was the literary depiction and description through novels or today through cinema, etc., etc. That's why uh, to describe an object means to give determinations, but because these are determinations of a singular object, they are contingent in a sense that they could be otherwise because the concept uh, is, 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 contains only the necessary uh, determinations of the object. It has no color, no shape, no characteristic, uh, empirical characteristic, etc., etc. Whereas a depiction of a situation, uh, th that's another illustration. Someone who visits a foreign country, uh, let's say a Japan, you go on holiday to Japan for a week, you narrate your trip to Japan, you will give depiction, description, feelings, representation, stories, uh, anecdotes, you will, you will tell the story about Japan, how you experience this for a week. But then, uh, a conceptual understanding of Japan, you would not need to go to Japan, you just read books about Japanese economy, uh, the anthropology of the Japanese people, the religion of the Japanese people, Japanese sociology, Japanese politics, and you would have a conceptual picture of what Japan is without, haver, without ever having set foot on, on Japanese soil. These are two ways, and on both ways, here I'm a Hegelian, the conceptual understanding is more true than the empirical uh, experience, basically. And anyway, with uh, globalism, uh, free circulation of people, uh, there are uh, uh, Japanese people, uh, Japanese restaurants in most Western countries. So basically, the difference here is the difference between <laughs> the German uh, deduct deductive uh, deductive uh, uh, thinking means to go from universal and to deduce the singular uh, that would be a deductive metaphysics one might say and there is the anglo-saxon Uh, plus French, uh, that would be description, describe, plus uh, novels and literature, poetry, etc., plus uh, inductive, uh, empirical, inductive empiricism. The Germans, uh, they want to deduce the singular and the, the Anglo-Saxon through their scientific method. They want to elevate themselves to a universal that they do not really believe in because of Hume, etc. That's complicated, but basically, uh, yeah. The universal has no uh, singularized properties precisely because it is abstract. So that's the difference between describing an object and, and thinking about the object. Uh, yeah.
the definition expresses the characteristic of the concept of an object, its universal nature and its particularity through which uh, he distinguishes itself from others. So the, the, the universal would be the moment of the concept uh, in, in the ordinary sense and the, the, the characteristic would be would be the, the properties, the determinacy which makes a concept limit itself in one particularization. Uh, triangle would be universal, square triangle would be uh, a particular a particular type where the one of the uh, one of the angles is 90 degree or here isosceles triangle where the two sides are equal or here equilateral triangle where the three sides so that would be the characteristic the definition of a triangle would be a geometrical figure with three sides in a, in a Euclidean space uh, that would be the universal, and here would be trois, three particular types of triangle, square, isosceles, and uh, equilateral, and the, the fundamental characteristic would be all the angles and the sides have to be equal, two sides have to be equal, one of the angles have to be a square. That would be, in mathematics, it's very easy, but actually it works for, uh, for pretty much uh, everything. And that's why it's important whenever one speaks to define the words, that's the first step, to define what one talks about. And this, this means giving determinacies and determinations. Okay, the division or, uh, yeah, the, the, the division expresses from a universal, uh, a, a determination of, of this universal, uh, which presents it in its distinction. That's what I've just talked about. And now I will make a small uh, pause, I will edit the video, or maybe I won't, so I will just get a glass of water. But no, I, I, will, uh, I will use uh, an illustration. This is a glass of water. I made this video really because I understood that uh, my videos are too complex, so I will use this video as an introductory uh, lecture for the people who will watch my further video. So, so, so the people who really don't know anything about logic, that they can have a, an introduction. It will last probably uh, two hours, but uh, it, maybe it will be two hours well spent. So here's an illustration, a glass of water. I put a pill into this. Here I could describe what happens. It is being uh, dissolved away. Uh, there are bubbles. There is sound. There is a uh, the, the taste will change. The color will change. So this is how to describe the the, the chemical uh, process. But actually, to understand would mean to give the the pre the chemical properties of the the the, the, the pill that I have just in inserted, it's just uh, to give a little bit of energy, to give the chemical composition of water, to, 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 to understand the effect it has upon the organism in terms of giving energy, enabling a better uh, attention span, uh, to work more efficiently, uh, the, 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 the energy that it gives, the, the, the boost, as they call this, and why do the molecules uh, get uh, dissolved, uh, why does the water uh, uh, produces uh, um, uh, uh, the dissolution and so that would be to understand, not simply to describe, uh, but to, to understand. Basically, that's the, the difference between a theoretical perspective and a more empirical. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Now we talk about judgments. I will first drink uh, my glass of uh, energetic. Uh,
drink. <sighs> okay. Uh, so we talk about judgments. A judgment uh, is simply the relationship between a singular and a particular or a universal, which means S is uh, U or S is P or P is U. These are judgments and to judge in ordinary sense means to have a negative view on something uh, that's a bad movie, that's a nasty person, that's a failed uh, a failed uh, uh, a failed economic policy, that's a, a terrible decision. These are judgments. Uh, you are uh, uh, you are despicable, you are ugly. Some people do not like to be judged, but to a judgment in the formal uh, logical definition doesn't mean to say things are bad or nasty or evil or whatever. It means simply to subsume, to put a determination of, of the concept under another, namely to say that a singular is a universal. This uh, piece of paper is yellow. This singular object, this is the, this, this object is the singular, and the universal is the abstract representation, the, the, the sensuous representation of color. It is subsumed under all the universal, uh, the, all the yellow objects are universal. And under this, you have a paper, flower, uh, the sun. The sun is not yellow, strictly speaking, but that's just a way of talking. The submarine, etc., etc. So this is how the singular is subsumed under the universal. And it can be subsumed under the particular. Uh, This is a book officially by Hegel. This book, Nuremberger und Heidelberger Schriften, uh, is a book by Hegel, but the particular would be uh, lectures, lectures for students. Uh, so, this book is a work by Hegel, this book is a lecture by Hegel, lectures by Hegel are works by Hegel basically. This is just an illustration. Uh, England uh, is a, a country uh, England uh, is a western country England is a country uh, in which uh, the English language is the predominant language. Uh, and here, the, 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 the Western countries in which the, the, the English language is predominant, Canada, US, Scotland, etc., etc. Western country. English language, uh, Scotland, England, US, Canada, etc. Et so that is the subject and that is the predicate, subject, predicate, subject, predicate. And the is is the copula uh, which ties the, the two together. So the logic abstracts from any empirical content and consider only the form of the relationship, uh, a singular is a particular or, or a universal, and the particular is a universal. These are the, the, the three uh, moments, basically, that S 
is u uh, p is u s is p basically this is these are the judgments yeah so uh, the problem is that The singular has many particular determinations, particular aspects, one might say, and when one judges, uh, one can pick up uh, one uh, particular determination and leaving aside the other, for instance, uh, this person is in his 20s, that's one particular characteristic, S is uh, P, so uh, this man is in his 20s, but uh, maybe uh, he's a, a student of uh, economics, maybe uh, he's uh, of Pakistani origin, uh, maybe uh, he's married, etc, etc. Why pick one particular determination and not the other? So to judge in an abstract sense means simply to subsume a singular under a particular or etc. But a proper judgment, we see that later, means to consist in using the, the proper category, the proper uh, the proper uh, predicate. Uh, if uh, if. The only thing one can say about th this object is this is a book. It's true, but it's not really. It doesn't require a lot of judgment in a sense of being able to think properly. Uh, it is uh, a lecture, a book which contains lecture to enable uh, uh, people who are not familiar with logic to become uh, more acquainted. That would be a, a better judgment in a sense that it would explain the. the we will see that later. The substantial nature, namely the purpose of. Uh, the, the lectures on logic is to enable people who are ignorant in, in logic to acquire the basics. That is that that, that would be a, a more accurate judgment in a sense of uh, to say uh, this book is a physical object. That is a judgment because the singular is subsumed under the universal physical object. But this pen is a physical object as well. And to say about this book that it's just a physical object, namely that it has the properties of a uh, uh, being attracted uh, through a gravitation and, and having a, an inert mass, etc., uh, etc., et a weight. Uh, it, it's not. It's it's a correct judgment, but it's not uh, really uh, adequate in the sense that, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So to judge means to to be able to to predicate the correct predicate. Uh, to, to the subject, pr precisely. Okay, so... Uh, here I will go very briefly. Urteil means judgment. The judgment of quality, it doesn't mean uh, good or bad quality, it's simply uh, to say, to give a, a, a determinacy or a property which is inherent in the subject, uh, the positive, here we have positive and negative judgment, uh, A positive judgment means that uh, S is put under P, that is positive, not in the sense of good, it's simply the, the, the formal definition, and if uh, S is not put under P, it's a negative judgment. Uh, this book is about philosophy, it is not about poetry. So Kant, that would be the topics, the, the potential topics of a book. You, you would have 
philosophy and here poetry. Positive judgment means to subsume the singular under the particular, so that's a book about philosophy, and a negative judgment would be it's not about philosophy, therefore it's about something else. But it's not about philosophy, it's about poetry or architecture or uh, gardening or whatever. This is just positive and negative. So to say that uh, uh, this is not uh, this is not a wheelchair, uh, that's a negative judgment. It's also absurd, uh, but uh, yeah, it, it's simply to not to put S under P. So ba basically people judge constantly because to judge is to think, it's to associate a subject with a predicate, to connect, uh, to, uh, to separate and, 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 and to, to, to think nonetheless because uh, in the, the realm of sensuous perception, I go back to the beginning of the video, in the realm of sensuous perception, objects are perceived immediately, they are one. It is the mind which separates, basically the book is one, but if I think about the book, I say, uh, it is a book about philosophy, lectures for students, it contains uh, the formal introduction, it's an easy way, an easy access to the philosophy of Hegel, etc. I predicate determinations to a book, but the book in my sensuous perception, it is one, it is my mind which divides, separates, categorizes, etc, etc. But if I don't do this, I know nothing about the objects, basically. Uh, yeah. Yeah, then, uh, about positive and negative judgments. Uh, a geometrical figure with four sides whose sides are all equal and whose angles uh, each are uh, 90 degrees square angles, this is a square, so that would be a positive, uh, a positive judgment, but it can be, um, it can be reversed in a sense that a square. So here, a figure with uh, four sides of equal length and uh, four uh, right angles is a, is a square. That would be the judgment, but the reverse is true. A square is a geometrical figure who whose uh, it's reciprocal, but it's a very specific case because actually usually the positive judgments cannot be reversed in a sense that if I say uh, uh, a square is a geometrical figure it's a positive, uh, a positive judgment, but the reverse is not true, namely, if I say a geometrical figure is a square, it doesn't work because a geometrical figure can be a triangle. So a positive judgment uh, is not, cannot usually be reversed because uh, S is P, but P is not necessarily this S, but an other. It can only be inverted or reversed if P and S have the same extension, namely uh, a geometrical figure with three sides of the same length is a, a equilateral triangle. The only geometrical figure which has these properties is the equilateral triangle. So here in this particular case, P and S coincide strictly. But uh, if I say uh, a uh, an equilateral triangle is a triangle, it is, it is uh, true, but I cannot say that a triangle is an, an equilateral triangle because there are also ordinary triangles, isosceles triangles, rectangular triangles, etc. etc. So that's why the positive judgments cannot usually be easily, the, the, the reciprocal is not necessarily true and not always true, actually it's very, it's very rarely is the case. But in the case of negative judgment, uh, if I say uh, uh, a horse uh, is not a bird, uh, 
I'm, I'm tired, it's kind of late, uh, I've worked all day, it's not an excuse, but it's simply, it's absurd sometimes, but uh, it's just to illustrate. A horse, which is a singular type of animal, does not belong to the family of, of, of birds, so it's not subsumed under this particular, so it's a negative judgment. The reverse is necessarily true, namely, a bird, if, if uh, an object is a bird, it is not a horse, because a horses do not, I mean, in Harry Potter, there are flying horses, but basically, I'm tired. What I mean is, the, it's really serious, actually, namely, a, a negative judgment can be inverted. Uh, if I say, uh, this is not edible, uh, if I'm presented with an edible object, I can conclude logically that it is not a pen, because the pen does not belong under the category of particular types of edible objects. Uh, this is an illustration. Uh, yeah. This is not. Uh, uh, well, I will not. Uh, I will take a. I don't know a, whatever example, but. Uh, it can be. Uh, it can be burned. It's paper. It can be burned. Uh, if I cannot burn this. It's not made of paper, or maybe it's made of paper and it's wet, but uh, it's not dry paper, because if I try to burn this, this paper and it doesn't burn, it means that it's not dry paper, because, uh, yeah, that's an, an illustration of the reverse of negative judgments. Uh, then there is the unendliche urta, the infinite judgment, and here is the realm of absurdity. Uh, spirit is not an elephant. Uh, it's kind of the, the singular is put completely outside of the sphere, like, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I, because it's kind of difficult to understand, it's really a formalism, but here would be a horse is not a bird, that's a negative judgment, but it is another particular, it's a mammal, and uh, here would be uh, animals, that would be the universal, but an, an, an infinite judgment would mean a uh, the spirit is not an animal, basically. Uh, it's, you, you put uh, spirit would be a, that's the example in the writings of Hegel, it's not very clear, but basically it would be outside of the universal in a way. That, that's why it's absurd. Or, uh, uh, another absurd example is that uh, a, a table, a table is not a whale, like the, the, the big uh, fishes. These are not fishes, I don't know, but a table is not a whale, or a table is not a dolphin, that's completely absurd, but that's an example of an infinite judgment. It's just that it exists in logic, it's kind of weird, but it's just for the sake of uh, completion and uh, systematicity. But yeah, it, these are really absurd judgments, which are true. And this brings about the question of truth, namely, uh, <laughs> if someone <laughs> asks you, what is the truth? And the answer is, uh, a table is not a dolphin. Uh, uh, <laughs> a glass... Uh, uh, Glass is not an elephant. That's the truth. That's true, but it's not very convincing. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Let us laugh uh, about logic sometimes. Okay, now uh, judgments of quantity or reflection. The reason why I'm making this video is simply to, 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 to bring really the, the basics, uh, because it's really important. Uh, this is how human thinks. I mean, this video may not be important because uh, it's simply an introduction. Uh, it has helped me a lot, I realized over the years, I understood a lot by reading these very simple lectures for uh, teenage Germans. Uh, but it helps a lot to understand more sophisticated, more complex ways of thinking. So, uh, the urteil, the judgment of quantity or the judgment of reflection, to reflect means to go beyond what is immediate and to, to an other. Uh, a typical example would be 
the phenomena are given immediately and to reflect means to seek the laws, the forces, the ground of the phenomena. This is what we began with. So to, to reflect upon something, to reflect upon a problem means a, a given problem is immediately present and to reflect means to, to negate the immediacy and to go beyond, to think, to, 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 to separate in order to reconsider. This is what reflection means, to separate what is immediate and to go to a second moment to mediate through an activity of thinking. Uh, then there is the individual uh, urteil, the individual judgment, the particular judgment and the universal judgment. Here is uh, one is uh, you, some are you, all are you. Uh, Socrates uh, is Greek, some, uh, some uh, Athenians are Greek, which means that some are not, they can be a uh, uh, from Rome or from uh, Macedonia, I mean, they are perfect Greek, but uh, they, they can be Roman, they can be Egyptians, they can be Phoenicians, uh, they can be a uh, Persian. So Socrates is Greek or Socrates is Athenian. Some citizens, I mean, some people present in Athens are Athenians, which means that some are not. And if all uh, are Athenians, there's one, many, and some, because some are, it's the particular, you mean that some are not, so there is a division, and all is the totality. And uh, uh, this man is a thinking animal, some men are thinking animals, all men are thinking animals, except if they cannot think because of uh, genetic or, or uh, health problems, or uh, brain problems, all men, we, all humans who are in the age and the health, the, the, the health conditions of, of being able to think, they are all thinking because when all the members of a, of a class, so to speak, uh, are belong to the universal, I mean, all humans, with the exception of the very young, the very old, but here it's kind of contingent, but humans who are mentally and physically healthy, they are thinking animals. This is the fundamental characteristic of man, namely I mean, that man is a, an animal which thinks, which can contemplate the universality uh, through language and, and thinking and abstraction, which other yeah, animals cannot. So one man thinks, some men thinks, all men think, and if all belong to the, to the universal, it means it can be said not all men are thinking animals, but man is a thinking animal. So when the totality is reached, we can go back to the singular. Uh, uh, all, uh, all women are uh, mysterious. Another way of formulating this is that all women are mysterious. It means that woman is mysterious. And that's the beginning of prejudice, because if uh, all white people are racist, the white man is racist. So when one white person is racist, some white people are racist, all white people are racist means the white race is racist. This is what leftist thing. So basically it's just to show that the transition from the singular to the particular to the totality. It's not here, it's not singular, particular, universal, it's individual, uh, particular in the sense of few, many, and totality. That's why it's quantity. It's individual, few, many, all. And if all belong to the you, it means that the all can be reduced to the one. Uh, yeah, man is a thinking animal. Uh, <sighs> 
this uh, the, 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 this uh, book by Hegel is very complex and, and, and complicated. Many books by Hegel are complicated, overly complicated. Actually, all books by Hegel are overly complicated. So, Hegel is an overly complicated thinker, maybe. That would be the truth. Yeah, so here it's uh, individual particularis in universalum. So, it's individual, uh, few and many, and all in English. These are the judgment of quantity. Now there is, and we are almost uh, done with this introduction. So here is judgment of relation or necessity. And here we have categorical judgment, mean to express. Uh, the nature or the substance of an object or uh, the universal, uh, the no, 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 the, the essence or the concept and here I put a very simple, uh, here it means to, to, to judge uh, to judge, uh, it, it, it requires judgment in the sense of faculty to think, not simply to, and here I, I put an example, see very well. Okay, here's a red uh, vegetable, here's a yellow vegetables, and here is kind of a green vegetables, but re red, green, and yellow would be judgment of Dasein, what we saw earlier, but the categorical judgment would be to say this, this fruit or this vegetable is a tomato. That would be the, the nature, uh, the fact that it is red or yellow or green, is kind of not really important, although usually tomatoes are thought to be red, but it's only a quantitative determination. But basically, to, to judge properly would be to say this vegetable is a tomato. And even more would be to give the organic chemical composition, uh, the concept of a tomato from the point of view of botanics. But basically, the, the categorical judgment would be to extract the nature, the substance, and not the accidents or the, the contingent aspect. That's why it's necessity as opposed to contingence. The fact that the tomato is uh, uh, yellow, uh, green or red is not really important. It's contingent in a sense, but the, the nature of the substance is the, 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 the bo botanical classification. That would be what is important. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I will take another example. Uh, I will take another example. Uh, this book by uh, David Graeber, to say uh, it's a book published uh, by Penguin, that's, uh, that would be a judgment of Dasein. Uh, to say that it's a book written in English, the same thing, because it's not the nature, it does not express the substance, a categorical judgment would be, it's a book about economics and sociology, and more, even more accurately here means to judge, means to have really intelligence in the sense of, of being a faculty, I think a faculty to classify, namely any person who speaks English can say this is a book written in English, but here it's not really the nature of the substance, because this book could have been, it, it has been translated in any other language. Here, the, the, the substance, in order to judge properly, here it's really important, one has to have a knowledge of economics and sociology and politics, and it's a book by an anarchist thinker about the useless and pointless nature of most jobs in modern societies, and to extract the category, to, to categorize this book would be uh, political science, 
uh, and, and uh, even uh, it's not really political science, it's more uh, uh, p political uh, uh, activism in a sense, it's an, an, ana an analysis, it's both practical and theoretical, and, and it's uh, an anarchist uh, book, so that would be a, a beginning of judging properly about the nature and the serpent. Maybe it will become an influential book. Uh, th 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 that's, this, is, this means, uh, th this is what having judgment means. Uh, here I will just seek another book. Uh, no, yeah. Uh, another is, I picked the book, which I, they happen to be, I, I took a, a book from a right, uh, a left-wing author, here is more a libertarian author, to say that this book is uh, a book uh, in English that's not really uh, a categorical, of course it is, but it's not really important to say that it's a book written uh, in the 1940s, I think it's 1949. Uh, here, it, what I say is really, really important. Uh, officially, it was first published, I think, uh, in 1944. So, if you say, this is a book written by Hayek, uh, that's not really categorical. It's more. Uh, um, it's more. It would be more uh, a judgment of uh, inherence or quality to say it's a book by Hayek. It's a book published the first time in 1944. It's a book uh, written in English. Uh, it's a book uh, about economics. Here we would we would approach the substance or the nature. But to read really, to judge really in a good sense means to have economic knowledge to say why is this book important to say that it's a book written at the end uh, of, of, of the Second World War against uh, the, the, the bureaucratic excesses of both uh, National Socialist Germany and Soviet Russia against uh, the rising uh, tendencies of government to, to interpose themselves in the, the, the public and economic and social life through taxation, bureaucracy. Well. This would be a proper judgment mean, to, to really categorize within the social, historical, political, spiritual context, and this would mean to have judgment. Someone who sees this book and say, it's written in English, uh, the first letter of the name of the author is H, uh, it's Hayek, uh, it was published in the 20th century, this would be more judgment in the sense of quality, then it's true, but the real truth about the books mean to, to categorize substantially, essentially, conceptually, and here we, we enter the realm of really stupid logic into real thinking and to be able to have a good sense of judgment uh, mean to be able to classify not in a mechanistic way but really to understand which objects are important. Uh, yeah, th that's what the movie critics, for instance, they do or, or the, the, the people when they judge their politicians uh, to say that uh, uh, Boris Johnson uh, is blonde that would be a judgment of quality to say that uh, he's a British uh, quality, uh, but to a categorical judgment in a sense to, to express the substantial nature of someone like Boris Johnson would mean to express his role in the, the unfolding of British political life. And only uh, someone who knows about British politics would, could express the, the real categorical judgment in a way, to, to express, uh, uh, to say that he was a conservative, etc. That, that's an illustration. So, judgment of quality would be the sensuous presence. It's very easy to, to say, to speak the truth in a sense, uh, but the, the real truth, not in a Hegelian sense, but in a, in a sense of judgment, would be to express the proper nature, the proper substance. And here it requires uh, not just formal applied logic, but really a faculty to think uh, properly. Uh, so, yeah, it says that to express the substantial nature, so essential is opposed to inessential, necessary is opposed to contingent, substance is opposed to accidents, and the concept will be universal as opposed to the singular determination. Uh, and here uh, I'm a little bit revived, maybe it's the energy drink, or simply because it, it's really becoming interesting. I've talked for more than 45 minutes, maybe an, an entire hour. It was really boring, but here it's becoming really interesting from an intellectual standpoint, namely, to express the nature or the substance, or here I add essence or concept, means to separate, to distinguish, to judge in the sense of really to, to be able to think, uh, which kind of is kind of a demand, and to separate 
what is necessary from what is contingent, what is substantial versus what is accidental, what is essential versus what is inessential, and to leave aside the, the, the unessential properties uh, and, and to, to extract the, the subst substan substantial content, one might say. That's, that's what judging means. Yeah. This is what being able to judge, uh, to, to have a good sense of judgment. And here I, 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 uh, I am working all day uh, to produce a video which eventually will uh, enlighten people and, uh, to communicate my thoughts. I read about, uh, and I will work uh, as soon as I uh, take a few hours of sleep, but about um, evolutionary biology. To have judgment in an evolutionary perspective means uh, not to say uh, here are berries uh, or um, mushrooms or here's a, uh, a, a, a polar bear that would be judgment of quality but real judgment would mean are these fruits uh, these berries are they edible to judge would mean you have the berry uh, edible or poison to judge would mean to, to, to put the subject under the proper predicate. Uh, you have a, 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 a bear. Uh, run, uh, freeze, uh, or fight. You have to analyze the substantial nature of the, 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 the potential threat. And to judge would mean to classify the singular under the proper category and the, 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 the hunter the gatherers and the, 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 even the primitive peoples uh, with no formal knowledge of logic they have a sense of judgment if they have made it through over evolutionary time in the official narrative because they don't need to know about the, 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 the formal aspect of logic to have a good sense of judgment means uh, <laughs> when one encounters a, a polar bear uh, maybe fighting is not always the best option. Running, I don't know. Uh, yeah, but that's that's a very difficult uh, situation to judge. And to, to, to be able to exert proper judgment means to categorize, to, ex to extract the, the substance. Here it would be the chemical substance, but actually it's more an intellectual work. Is it edible? Is it poisonous? Etc. This is mean. This is this what judging means in, in, in practical cases, in applied cases. And hypothetical means the relationship between uh, the determination. If then, uh, if this looks edible, I will eat it. Uh, if it looks poisonous, I won't. Uh, if it's poisonous, uh, I will uh, probably be sick and die. It was poisonous. I will die. That, that would be an, an, an error of judgment. So no, uh, but hypothetical judgment is the formal presentation of if then. Uh, so it, it doesn't say uh, that the if is true. It, it simply states the relation, the, the necessary relation, namely if A then B. Whether A is true or not is irrelevant. It's simply that the, the connection is necessary, but the, the premise in a way, is, is irrelevant. So that's the formal aspect of hypothetical judgment. It's very common in um, computer science. It's Grund und Folge, principle and consequence. Uh, if I adopt this principle, then I will apply the logical consequences. I'm not sure that the principle is correct, but if I choose this, then I will do that. That's logical rigor. Uh, but then there is to, to be stubborn means to to make the connection the relation without necessarily being checking if the premise is correct if the premise is not correct then applying the if then judgment maybe the hypothetical judgment can be problematic problematic will comes later it's a determination of modality but basically hypothetical judgment means if a then b a therefore b but it doesn't say anything about A. It simply states the relation of necessity. If I see a polar bear, 
I will fight the polar bear. Uh, if I'm not capable of uh, handling the polar bear, maybe I shouldn't have... Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that's the kind of thinking. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's why you are in a mood to laugh, but I might have problems with Hegel because Officially, Hegel was a peaceful uh, uh, philosophy teacher uh, teaching lectures uh, in classrooms. Uh, he never made uh, applied uh, practical work. All he did was uh, think. Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah. And then this disjunctive uh, judgment means to separate a totality uh, in A is either A is either B or C or D or E and sometimes it can be both and so a disjunctive judgment means to separate a totality which would be the universal separated in its various particularities so that would be A, B, C uh, a, a human being is either a male or a female or uh, another gender uh, uh, trans a disjunctive means you are either a male or a female, or in between, or beyond, or below, or uh, above, whatever. That's a disjunctive judgment. And uh, the, the moment of... Here I will not redraw, but basically the, 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 the logical categories in... Uh, if people watch this, uh, they will simply have to focus. I cannot uh, redraw again, but basically... In the, the judgment of... Categorical judgment. The relationship is substance accidents. In hypothetical judgment, the relationship is cause and effect. If uh, the, there is a, a climate change, uh, the crops will fail. If then the cause of crop failure is climate change. If uh, the atmospheric pressure is uh, the conditions are such that it will rain. If they are so, it will rain. Uh, it rain. The cause of the rain is the atmospheric determination. So, uh, in the the the, the categorical judgment, the relationship is substance accidents. In the hypothetical judgment, the relationship is cause and effect. And in the disjunctive judgment, the relationship is a whole and its parts, namely. The, the, the whole, the totality would be the universal and the parts would be the particularization. This is an illustration. Uh, uh, an American politician is either uh, a, a Democrat or a Republican or uh, or an anarchist or a uh, non-politically affiliated, whatever. Uh, this is an example. So to, to, to think rigor rigorously means to separate a universal in all its particularization. Uh, and this is a disjunctive judgment. And one-sided thinking consists in saying uh, a, a human being is either a male or a female. There is no third option. And that's the, the problem in, in, all, in, in modern life between traditional people who say you are either a male or a female and the more modern who say you can be a queer, a transgender, etc. That's an attempt to solve the one-sidedness of the categories. Then, uh, I will not draw, but this is in case, uh, this is the, the, the table of categories uh, of Kant, basically, uh, which is explained, but it is logically derived in, uh, in the science of logic. Here is simply a simple presentation here are the modalities of judgments 
Assertoric, here it's in, written in German, but it can be translated in English. Assertoric judgment means to say that the subject is the way it is, to assert predicates about the being of something. It is the way it is. It's Wirklichkeit, namely, this is how things are. A problematic means it could be different. Uh, it could be different. Uh, here, what I wrote. Uh, how things could be. So it's uh, actuality or, or reality in a way. This is how things are. This is possibility. It is so, but it could be different. Uh, this lecture is kind of boring, but it could be more entertaining or more interesting, or maybe it's interesting and it could be, uh, maybe it couldn't be better. Uh, that would be apodictic, <laughs> I don't know, but basically to assert means to say how things are, to problematize, it's not really how one should express oneself, but basically it's possibility, I mean, it could be different, so this is how things are. Things could be different, so there is a doubt, uh, it could be different, and apodictic means it is necessarily the way uh, uh, it is. Uh, here I will use mathematics. Uh, this is a triangle. This is an assertion. This is a triangle. Uh, the, the problematic could say uh, it could be a, a different triangle. It could be different. Uh, so that's how things are. Uh, this is how things could be. It could be a, a normal triangle. It could be an equilateral triangle. And the apodictic, the apodictic means uh, this triangle is not simply the way it is. It has to be the way it is. Namely, uh, because it is a square triangle, the, the angle has to be right. Yeah, and the, the, the relationship between the hypotenuse uh, the, the, the sum of the other squares uh, has to be an equal. So this is how things are, this is how things could be differently, and this is how things have to be. Namely, it, it is necessary, it's not, simply, it's not simply how things are, it is validated conceptually. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. And then, here we, we enter the realm of what in the science of logic, it's not in the simple lecture, but basically, I take the example, house uh, which is built so this house built in such a way so this is the singular the house is the universal the way it is built the characteristic of this house is the particular namely houses can be built in various different ways but this singular house is subsumed under this particular and the particular is subsumed under the universal then is beautiful, and here it's a fourth moment, uh, namely, uh, it means here to judge in a sense of, of really a, an aesthetic and a critical judgment whether or not uh, uh, um, an object corresponds to the concept, namely the purpose of a house, uh, in, in, if it's a work of arch architecture, is to be beautiful. So here I will put uh, this, uh, this uh, this tower, let us say. Uh, here it's a, a judgment which passes into syllogism, namely an object. Uh, no, this uh, this painting. Uh, this uh, this uh, this uh, this painting. Yeah. 
this painting uh, drawn in such a way is beautiful. So in order to say whether a painting is beautiful or not, uh, the particular has to correspond uh, not only to the universal, how the universal is, because every painting is a painting, no matter how the drawing is, but the purpose of a painting, if it's art, is to be beautiful. So here, the particular has to be adequate to the end goal and to judge in, in a sense of judgment in ordinary sense means to seek whether or not the, the particularities and the, the, the characteristic of a painting or, or a movie or a CD, uh, this new song uh, with these lyrics is great or, or not. And to judge means whether or not the particular corresponds to the universal, namely the, the universal here, or a painting or a song or a, or a book doesn't simply has to be the way it is. It's not simply the way it is. It has to be, and this is where uh, we meet uh, apodictic in a sense of uh, purpose, namely a, a, a work of art, uh, a book, uh, a political leader, uh, this political leader uh, who takes these and these decisions is he competent or not? Here, the, the universal would be painting and beautiful politicians and competent, and the particular characteristic would be the transition uh, between uh, S and U, and the particular has to be in such a way that uh, the singular corresponds to the concept. Uh, here, it's like I said, it's a really a speculative logic, namely, the purpose of the politician is to take the good decision, the purpose of an artist is to produce great art, etc. And here to judge means whether or not the work produced corresponds to the end goal, uh, whether or not the decisions of the politicians are uh, the good ones, whether or not the, the new album is, uh, is, is uh, pl pl pleasing, uh, pleasant to listen, etc. etc. And this is the, the transition, transition towards the Schluss, which is the syllogism, which is the unity, of U, P and S, uh, S is uh, P, P is U, therefore S is U. So a syllogism, here I will uh, end because I'm really uh, kind of exhausted. I will rest a little bit and I will keep, uh, not this video, but I keep working tomorrow. But basically, uh, Socrates is an Athenian, Athens is a Greek city, and therefore Socrates is, is a Greek. Uh, Athens, here, the city of Athens, is the middle, the middle ground, here the word ground is important, between the singular and the universal, namely, uh, uh, Socrates is Greek through his mediation with the city of Athens. Because Athens belongs to Greece and because Socrates belongs to Athens, Socrates belongs to Greece. This is a syllogism, is a judgment. Here is S and U, we find a judgment, but which has been mediated. Uh, it, it's a judgment with its ground, namely with, it, with its foundation. It is a, a judgment which is founded upon two other judgments, which that which we call the premises. Uh, uh, insofar as the universal uh, subsume the particular under itself and the particular subsume the, the singular under itself, it means that the universal subsume the singular as well. So. Uh, the universal is broader than the particular, the particular is broader than the singular, therefore the universal is broader than the singular. So the singular is put under the universal. That's a logical connection. Uh, or otherwise, since the singular contains within itself the determinacy, the determination of the particular, and the particular the determinacy of the universal, so the singular contains also the universal within itself. Uh, so these are the premises, and this is the conclusion. 
and uh, basically to, to, the, to reason, a syllogism means to unite a singular with a universal through the mediation, the, the middle of a particularity. And all things are a syllogism, all things are a judgment, namely this book is, uh, is a book, but this book is uh, a work by Hegel, works by Hegel are about German philosophy, so this book is about German philosophy. And uh, th this book is united with German philosophy through the mediation of Hegel. So all things are a judgment uh, because all things are a singularized universal through the mediation of a particular. Bullshit Jobs is a singular book. Uh, it's a book about economics and uh, the, the, un the unity between Bullshit Jobs by David Graeber and economics, it's for the, the particular type of uh, denunciation of po pointless work. So Bullshit Job is about pointless work. Pointless works are a, a recurrent feature of modern economic life in the West. So this book is about economics because it talks about one of the aspects of modern uh, economic life. This is an illustration. So all things are a syllogism because all things are three in one. Uh, yeah. This object uh, is a, a, a pair of glasses, glasses unable to see more clearly, and therefore this object unable to see more clearly, but there are other objects which enable to see more clearly uh, what you put into the eye, lenses, uh, so the universal would be to see more clearly, and the particulars would be uh, telescopes, uh, glasses, lenses, uh, I don't know how you call this. I don't know how you call this. Whatever. So, yeah. This is an illustration. It works for every object because every object is a singularized universal through the mediation of a particular. And, uh, yeah. And to judge properly means to see the. the the proper characteristic which unites the singular to the part, to the universal, which particular, etc. Et to, to, to judge means to, to, to think properly. So it's been two hours and eight minutes long. I'm kind of a little bit exhausted. I've just commented, I will conclude, I have just commented. Uh, it's been a little bit longer than I thought. Maybe I should have... Uh, it was improvised in a way, I just took uh, 10 minutes to, to prepare the video and then I spoke. But it has helped me over the years to understand Hegel. I have tried to be as clear as possible. Uh, I will go back to the, to the start, to the second paragraph. Thought consider the universal of things and logic is the science of thought. So when we think, uh, we might, when we represent, we have singular objects in mind, but when we think about the universal nature, we think in, in terms of universality and uh, to, to be able to, to simply to understand. Here I would just make, maybe it's uh, too late, I should have done this earlier, but basically I, I wanted to make, to make this, uh, to make this uh, at the beginning, I forgot. It's an illustration of the relationship between the universal, the particular, and the singular, namely, the universal here would be the particularization, and if you are followed, this would be a disjunctive judgment. Uh, art is either poetry, music, painting, architecture, sculpture, uh, cinema, that would be the universal, would be art, and it would be particularization, and then you can put as many singular 
uh, if you remain in the realm of art, uh, you could have all the works of art ever produced. So that would be an illustration, namely each. So let us say art. Art is the universal. Uh, architecture, sculpture, painting, uh, music, poetry, uh, cinema. And here you would have all the movies, uh, all the, the, the poems, all the songs, all the, the symphonies, etc. And each, uh, each music, let us take a song by uh, Lady Gaga, it's a singular song. It contains within itself the particularization of being music and the, 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 the universal of being art. So every song, even bad ones, I'm not talking about the songs by Lady Gaga, but even bad songs produced by anyone, they are kind of a form of art, even if it's bad musically, bad taste, bad composition, whatever, it's here. The judgment comes into play and to judge properly, I've expressed how to do so. But then I've just ex expressed the formal aspect, then to acquire judgment in terms of aesthetics, politics, moral, etc. It requires a, uh, more empirical knowledge and more reflection, but here is just the formal aspect. But basically every singular song is a particular uh, type of art, namely music, and then if you say the universal is music, then you have classical music, pop music, rock music, rap, uh, jazz, uh, folk, uh, etc., etc., metal, uh, rock, uh, uh, country, uh, R&B, um, uh, a cappella, uh, uh, traditional dance music, uh, etc., etc. So you can pick up the, the, the terminuses uh, as you wish, but let us say, a song by Lady Gaga, music, art, it contains the particularities of music, the rhythm, uh, the melody, the lyrics, the, the, the sound, uh, etc., the, 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 etc., et and it, it contains the universality in itself, namely its art, it is supposed to present the beautiful, uh, the, 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 the idea, as I would say, the revelation of the divine, in a way, that's one way of appeasing sometimes the difficulties of existence, art, through art, to transcend the hardships and the suffering of existence through an aesthetic experience. So this would be an illustration in each singular, or a, let us talk about a politics or a, a monarchy here would be a... This would be the, the, the rule of uh, Louis XIV, uh, so uh, that's 17th century, and still uh, partly 18th century, 17th century, so that's Louis XIV. Uh, that's a singular case of a king, particularity would be monarchy, Universal would be government, and here you would have republic, uh, democracy, totalitarian bureaucracy, aristocracy, uh, tyranny, etc., etc., and here you would have examples. So S, P, U, it means that S, all the S contains the P within themselves, and all the P's contain the U, therefore the S contains the U within itself. That was what I wanted to illustrate. Uh, it's been too long, but I will, before going to sleep, I will rewatch the video. If it's convincing, I will not edit, but if it's convincing, I will, until I, I keep publishing video, I will use this as an introduction uh, for people who really have never heard about logic or whatever, because I have realized, I will conclude on this, that my videos are actually way too complicated because uh, that's my, my problem, uh, my, my responsibility, but basically, I will, if, if this video, by re-watching the video tonight, if it's rather convincing, uh, I, will, I will recommend this video in all of my next videos, as long as I publish video, for an introduction, really, to the, the simple thought determination, because uh, it's, it's really Unterklasse, it's uh, for, for people uh, supposedly 15, 16, 17 years old, I think. So, uh, of course, uh, it's dubious that uh, it really happened because it really did not happen, but it was supposed to be uh, for, for uh, teenagers, namely an, an introduction to logic and 
just the UPS, it simplifies, clarifies so much. And the idea, the, the idea uh, it's both in Hegelian sense and in uh, classical sense, that the universal is contained within the singular. And the universal basically is God. So God is within each man. Uh, and just to understand that each singular contains the particular and the universal within itself, it, it's so simple, but it, it's kind of enlightening, and it clarifies, it simplifies, it enlightens, that's what I think, maybe uh, I've been too long or whatever, but uh, hopefully we can erase the dummies, if the video is, is correct, it's just logic, and uh, now maybe uh, my next videos will be more intelligible or my previous videos for the people who now will watch eventually. Okay, I improvise. It's been two hours and 15 minutes. I will stop the video. I will rest a little bit, watch the video, and I keep working tomorrow. Uh, yeah.